the morning. So last few days I have been keeping an eye on the weather forecast and it's been looking pretty decent. Um, so I thought to myself, right, I'm going to go away, do a couple of nights camping and um, I'll pick somewhere. So eventually I thought to myself, where else better to go than the Isle of Skye? So that's where I'm heading this morning. It's about half past five, so I'm not in any rush today. Uh, the weather's to clear up in the afternoon in Sky, so um, I've got a bit of time to potter about with. So I'm just going to take my time getting there, uh, maybe stop off at Glencoe on the way and see if there's any um, of that golden morning light left. And find somewhere to camp and go and take a few pictures and stuff, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I've not been in Sky with the camera yet, so I am buzzing. Um, so I've just stopped at Tesco, I'm going to grab a couple of bottles of water and a few cans of the old monster for the journey up the road and then make a start. So I was driving along the Loch Lomond Road there and I've made an executive decision to pull over at Inverugles. Um As I was driving along, I mean it's, it's quite a cloudy morning but there's a big gap in the, the horizon in the east about that size from where I am. Um, so if the sun pokes through that, it could light the whole sky up. And there are quite a few gaps in the sky now as well. So I think I'm going to hang about here. It's about 20 minutes to sunrise. So I think I'm going to hang about for another 10 minutes or so, see if anything happens, if there's any light starts to appear. If there is, I'll jump out quickly and try and find a composition. Um, I think I, <laughs> if I'd have left a little bit early and I hadn't fannied about in Tesco so much, I could have probably been up at the Black Mount or something by now and get some nice shots, but um, this will have to do. So I would rather get out and nothing happen than be driving up the road and the sky light up and me stuck on uh, the A9. So... Um, I'll wait another 10 minutes, I'll go out and have a wee look and we'll see if we can find in. If not, then there's no harm done. Oh, midges are eating me alive here. Um, so I did decide to get out of the car. Um, I probably should be seeing some light by now, um, but there's nothing much happening. Uh, but I'm going to give it another five minutes or so. I'm at one of the viewpoints at Inverugles. It's a man-made viewpoint. It's basically a big flight of stairs with a few benches on it. And it gets you up above the trees there to see the view. So I'm going to stand here for another few minutes, see what happens. And if I don't get any light, don't get any light. But it was worth the effort, so we'll see what happens. Well, I don't think we're getting any light. Um, I think if I'd have been on oh, the midges, I think if I'd been on the other side of the lock over towards Inversnade Hotel, um, it would have been really nice because I can see some of the Monroes there, Ben Vane and Ben Vorlich just behind me, and uh, they have a touch of light on them, but um, the wrong angle for that. Um, there is a tiny bit of light on Ben Lomond, but the sky there's there's not much happening in it, so. Just going to pack the stuff away, uh, get back into the car, and I'll make my way up to Glencoe and put it about for half an hour or so, and then make our way to the sky. So, was it worth it? No, with these midges, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm going to get back to the car quickly. <laughs>
just stopped the car and I've headed up onto what's called Ralston's Memorial. Um, I've been here a couple of times, had a couple of nice shots from it, um, but I've never actually had it on a, a nice day. It's a bit nippy getting, to be quite honest. Um, it's a really nice shot, There's some missed on the Three Sisters as well. All I'm waiting for is the sun to pop through and I just need a little bit of light on one of the mountains, I think, just to make the shot. Um, so I'll hang about for another five or ten minutes or so and hopefully we get it. If not, then fair enough, it's a nice shot in itself, but um, if you're a wee bit snobby, I would like a wee bit of light on it, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, it was a pretty worthwhile stop. Um, hung about for probably about half an hour ago, or half an hour or so. I did say I was only going to be 10 minutes, but it never happens, does it? So, oh, big puddles. Uh, the light did eventually appear, and it casted some um, sort of light rays and some shadows and stuff on the mountains, so something of a wee bit of interest instead of just... I mean, it's a lovely view, but you need a bit of light or something to try and make it a wee bit more interesting, so... Worthwhile stop. So that's going to be me for Glencoe. I am not stopping at any more places. Um, I'm just going to get myself over to the sky and I'm forgetting that the sun goes down quite early at this time of year as well. So I'm going to actually have to locate somewhere to camp as well. <laughs> um, so better get moving. Right, so I'm now at Nice Point Lighthouse and it was a fair drive to get here to be fair so I've decided that this is where I'm going to be today. Um, so I'm waiting for the sun going down, the sun goes down about half past seven and what I'm going to do is I'm going to camp here as well, set my alarm for about maybe half three, four o'clock in the morning and then take uh, the 50 mile drive from here um, over to Kerrang for, sun, for sunrise. I actually couldn't find a better, I mean, the, where I'm camping is fantastic, the view is unbelievable. I'm just, I just hope the sunset's really good for the shot as well, but I don't really care because this is, this is just phenomenal. I'll show you what I'm looking at. So I've got the tent all set up and I am comfortable and very cosy. Um, it's about two hours till sunset so I'm just going to lie, in fact I'm trying not to go to sleep because I'm so tired but if I go to sleep I know for a fact that'll be me for the night. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to sit about, relax, have something to eat and then go and check out um, where I'm going to be for the shot. The view at the door of the tent is just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I like to see it. cloud about. There's a small bank of haze on the on the horizon there so hopefully that might light up. If not then there's probably just going to be a big band of light so either way it's going to be nice. The, the light at the moment is just hitting off the side of the cliffs and stuff so even this is a good shot in itself. It's really quite busy but there's not many photographers I thought there would be I thought there'd be quite a lot but it's actually not too bad. So I don't know how long it is to sunset because I've not got my watch on so I reckon there's probably, I'm with the sun, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. 
So just hang about, enjoy the view, and hopefully we get a decent shot when the sun gets down. disappears on the cliffs, it's not really worth it anymore, it looks quite flat. Uh, but I think I've got quite a nice shot. Uh, we could have done with more cloud in the sky to be fair, but other than that, it went really well. So I'm going to head back to the tent. Um, it's a really clear night, so there might be some stars out, but the way this wind is, I don't think we'll be, um, I don't think we'll be able to keep the tripod steady enough, but see what happens. Um, we'll get back to something to eat and then check and see if we'll get any stars out. Right, so I'm back in the tent and I think the wind's changed direction slightly because it was blowing quite heavily down here earlier but now it's absolutely fine. I've just perked myself behind a couple of rocks and it seems to be doing the job. So I am absolutely starving. I've had nothing since about 11 o'clock this morning so I am going to get myself something to eat. Um, the choice is noodles tonight. Great. Um, but I've got a load of packet of pineapple Jaffa cakes and all sorts of other sweets. The one thing I forgot to bring with, with me was a beer. Cannot believe it. So I'm definitely going to make sure I get something in poor tree for the morrow night. <laughs> um, but I'm going to have something to eat and then see if there's any stars out. But it does seem to be a hard rolling in, so we'll see what happens. Food time. So earlier on, um, when I spoke to you, it was about back at nine, coming up for ten o'clock, and I said to myself, right, I've got a couple of hours sleep, I'll jump up, and I'll go outside and I'll have a look and see if there's any stars about midnight. It's now 2.23 in the morning, and I slipped like a log. Absolutely brilliant. It's not been much wind, this is about as bad as it's been. Um, so I've popped my head out of the tent there, but... There's a couple of stars and stuff, but it's not worth taking any pictures. What is really eerie though, is the lighthouse beam is shooting across the land there. Uh, so I opened the, the tent to go out of the toilet there, I went, Jesus. <laughs> there was this big beam of light, I thought I was getting abducted by aliens, but I forgot there was a lighthouse. So, I'm going to chill out for half an hour, and then get everything packed away, and make the long journey over to the Kerrang. It's quite mild this morning, so hopefully it'll be worth it. Right, so tent's all packed away. Um, just in the car, ready to set off and heading towards the Kerrang. Didn't realise how long it was going to take to get everything up and then walk back up to the car, to be honest. So I'm going to need to be quite quick. But I think Satnav says an hour and a half to where I'm going, even though it's only 50 miles because of the roads. But I reckon once we hit the actual main road, main road part, that should be pretty quick. So I better get going pronto. It would appear that I have interrupted somebody's sleep and they are not for moving. Come on! Come on! Finally! Onwards! So, just at the Kerrang, the sun is just about to come up, but there's not a lot of colour in the sky, which is good. It took me nearly two hours, 20 minutes to get here. Reason being is because I got stuck behind one of the big um, heavy load lorries, 
which took up two lanes with an escort. I got stuck behind that for 40 minutes. And then I was like trying to kill myself trying to get here. However, what a view. Absolutely fantastic. So I've just got to watch my foot in here because it's quite slippy. So I'm going to get up here, get a tripod set up, and in a couple of minutes we should be ready to go. So after all that running about, managed to get here in time by the looks of it. So fingers crossed, you get a decent shot. Light on the Kerrang as such, yeah. Uh, over in the kilns, it is phenomenal. There's just rays of orange pink light. Um, I'm going to show you quickly before it goes. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the GoPro, but hang on a second, I'll show you. I think it'd probably be better if I showed you on the back of the camera. Unbelievable. So the light never really came to much, um, there's a, a small bit of colour in the sky and stuff and um, there's quite a big bank of cloud out to sea unfortunately so um, I'm going to hang about here, I'm just, I mean, it's, it's a lovely place to sit, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm not in any hurry so I'm just going to sit here for a gap in the clouds um, hopefully we get some light on the hills there and maybe get a shot of that but the light of sunrise hitting over the coolings was just phenomenal um, that's probably a better shot than the one of the actual Kerrang if I'm honest with you um, so I'll stick them both up and you can tell me what you think Right so that's me back at the car um, quite a decent morning a couple of nice shots um, sat there for quite a while, to be honest, waiting in some light, but never got any, but it was good just to sit there, had a bit of breakfast and stuff, but I'm quite hungry again, so I'm um, all about six or seven miles from Oog, so I'm going to take a pop down there, um, go to the shops, get a couple of things, um, get something to eat and stuff, and I can't decide whether to go from there to the old man's store, but it'll be full of people, or maybe take a pop to the fairy pools. I'll see what happens. Make a decision. Right, oog. Right, so I am ready to go again. I've been fed, I've had a couple of coffees, and I'm feeling slightly more awake. I'm starting to get quite tired there. So what I basically did was just take a couple of hours just to sit, have something to eat and stuff and uh, edit a few of the images that well, you guys have already seen. So I've made a decision, I am going to go to the fairy pools and just work myself around the island and then back to Portree. And tonight I am going to head up the Old Man of Store um, with a camping bag full of tents, camera gear, a couple of beers. It's going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a slog. Um, the forecast for tomorrow morning is fog. Now, Old Manor Store sits about 720 metres, so with any luck, the whole sky will be under an inversion and I'll be above the clouds. Um, if not, then I might get a misty shot of it, but I'm really hoping for the inversion. But anyway, enough gabbing. I am going to get going and we will head on to the fairy pools and see if we can get there. It's a lovely blue sky sunny day i've just had to change into shots um but hopefully there'll be some cloud around to make a decent shot so better get going
So just hiking up to the ferry pools. Um, it's mobbed, absolutely mobbed. It's a part in the car park, but the good news is, is that everybody seems to be heading back to the car park, and I seem to be the only one heading up here. So probably be less people. It's absolutely cooking. It's about two in the afternoon, September, and it's about 22 degrees, which is cooking for Scotland. And there's not a cloud in the sky, so the land of drama, there's no clouds. It's fine. So, I'm going to find a couple uh, waterfalls. I mean, nobody there. And if this sun keeps up, I might even take a dunk. We'll see. There's still quite a lot of people around. I've been walking for about 20 minutes or so. So I've decided I'm just going to keep going up and up and up until there's limited people and see if there's anything I can get. And if not, by that time, by the time I start walking back down, there'll be something and everybody will be away. So, absolutely roasting. So I think I found somewhere with less people. Uh, there's a couple of people in front of me, but I reckon I can take them out and post. The problem I've had walking up here, other than the fact that it's obviously mobbed, is the fact that there's not a lot of water running. So some of the waterfalls that would normally look really impressive are pretty poor. So I've just really had to find something smaller that I can fill the foreground with, and obviously have the mountain in the background. So it's going to be a bit tricky, I think. I just want to jump in there. I'm absolutely roasting. But I'll give it a couple of minutes until I cool down and then I'll get the tripod out and see what we can get. So I managed to get a composition and managed not to get any people in it, which is a start. Um, it looks alright, the only thing that's missing is the fact that there's no clouds in the sky. So I might put that into black and white, you'll sort already, but I might put it into black and white or I might just leave it because it is what it is. Um, but now it's nice. I'm 100% going for a dip now. I am cooking. It's going to be freezing. All right. Woo. Woo. Well, I'll tell you, it's no warm. <laughs> once you get in, the old saying. Uh, feel a lot better now, cool down. So even if the shot's not that great, to be fair, I've enjoyed the walk, I've enjoyed the, uh, the wee swim I had, so I'm going to sit here and dry off for a few minutes in the sun and then make my way back to the car and get changed. And then I'm not sure what's going to happen tonight, I don't know whether I'm going to go up to the store or leave it till the morning, or whether I'm going to go to the Elgol, or I'm just going to drive and see what happens. So I'll head back to the car. Right, back at the car, I um, quite enjoyed that, absolutely roasting, I cannot believe it's like summer in September, um, still no further forward as to what I'm going to do, 
think I'm going to drive to Portree and try and get a couple of things charged because at the moment um, I'm running low on phone battery and my big battery pack so I'm probably going to try and get one of them charged and then hopefully within that time I've made a decision part of me is thinking just go up um, to the store in the morning um, because obviously my seat is going to be a fair jaunt carrying camera lenses and camera and tent, sleeping bag, camping mat, everything, food all the way up there so whereas in the morning I could go a bit lighter so I'm going to go and have a look around the Elgol, see if there's any place to wild camp and if there's not then I'll just bite the bullet and head up there so head back to Portree Right, old man of store it is um, just after sunset so we've got the head tops just in case should be about a 40 minute hike um, but I think it's going to take me a hell of a lot longer because the weight of this bag is just ridiculous uh, got camera lenses, a drone, camp store, just everything that you would expect and um, when I went to pick it up there I went oh god so I've got quite a, a steep climb ahead so I'm not going to do much filming on the way up I'm just going to get up there get a tent set up and then maybe go up and have a wee look for some spots for tomorrow so I'll speak to you when I'm up there <laughs> You can't see me, but um, you'll see the store and stuff there. It's pretty dark now. Um, we've only got about five minutes to go, so very eerie, I must say. Very eerie. But onwards we shall go. So that's me all set up and in the tent. Um, it was quite a tricky walk up here in the dark, to be quite honest. Um, kind of lost my bearings for a wee minute, but I think that was just because I was looking down all the time. But anyway, we're here. Um, took about 50, 55 minutes, I think. Um, legs were feeling the burn on the way up as well. Now, the stars outside are absolutely fantastic, so I'm just going to make myself a bit to eat noodles and then have a couple of Doritos, and then I'm going to go out and take some pictures and see what we can get because it'll be a long time before I'll be back up here again and this, this, the sky will be this clear so I'd better go out and get some decent pictures So I'm just back in from taking a couple of pictures. Um, the sky was fantastic. Um, so I've actually managed to silhouette the old manor store uh, with the ridge above. I managed to get the Milky Way there as well. The Milky Way is so clear, you can see it with the naked eye. What a night. Um, but it's half past 11 now and I've been on the go since half three this morning. So I am going to get myself some sleep. So sunrise tomorrow is about five past seven, so I've set the alarm for six. And hopefully we get something decent, fingers crossed. morning so the gamble paid off and we do have an inversion um, it's absolutely stunning so sun's due up in about 25 minutes so I'm just going to stand here and enjoy the view for the next 25 minutes because this is just unbelievable couldn't have got better conditions for it so hopefully 
be a nice kind of Venus band along the sky there when the sun comes up. And we'll get some light on the old man of store as well, so what a moment. So this morning's views have been nothing short of incredible, to be quite honest. Some really nice shots at the store, some shots at the Inversion. Um, it's just between the Milky Way last night and then this this morning, it's just absolutely unbelievable. So I'm going to end the video there. Um, I've had a fantastic less than what, 40 hours. Um, it's been absolutely superb. Really, I'm kind of lost for words this morning. Um, but listen, thank you very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please press like. And if you really enjoyed it, then hit subscribe. So thanks very much and I'll see you all there.